Yeah, All right, good. that's me. I'm Chris. Woo! We're going to talk about some exciting stuff uh, related to list formatting and uh, all the things that are happening over there. So the first thing we want to do is head over to our classic Warrior Horses site that we all have. Now, the Warrior Horses, like uh, a lot of, uh, of us, have uh, started to grow a little older, right? And uh, they're realizing that they're set in some of their ways and they're failing to attract some of the... The young, the young youngins, the youths of the of the horse community, right? Uh, and they they want them there because uh, you know that's their the future and uh, you know and more bodies on the battlefield and all that so on so forth. So like any uh, good corporate team, they thought, what's the best way to reach the youths? Uh, and that's uh, to put cartoons at a corporate SharePoint site, of course. So there we go. So now they have their own site dedicated uh, to the young horses. Uh, where all drawings were done by my daughter. Very good job, Eleanor. Woo woo! All right. So, what we're doing here is, uh, in attempting to reach out to the youth, right? Uh, we're also trying to make things a little easier for them to use stuff, right? So, one of the things SPFX did uh, years ago, right, was introduce a lot of standardized uh, ways of doing things, right? That weren't just uh, specific to you know, Microsoft 365 and, and that whole ecosystem, right? So you could bring in other developers, maybe React developers or some of your more traditional developers, right? To, to come in there and do that kind of stuff. Uh, meanwhile, over on list formatting, uh, someone thought, you know, we want to be able to write HTML in these lists. Why don't we do that not with HTML, but with JSON to make HTML? Woo, that's a great idea. We'll do it in a very custom, uh, unique way, specifically to Microsoft 365. So, Kind of the opposite, and that makes it harder uh, for some of us to approach this, right? Uh, even those of us that are working inside, you know, SharePoint online all, you know, all day, every day, you know, we're playing Microsoft lists and so on. Uh, this isn't something you're doing um, as your primary job. So list formatting is one of those things you do um, as a small integration piece, right? Or something you tweak to a project and make a huge difference in how people are using stuff. And it's really, really powerful, but there's quite a bit of a learning curve, right? So one of the things we talked about last week uh, was a way to decrease that. So let me jump over to that slide and we'll look at that one more slide again. And we'll talk about it again. So this was the JSONify a couple weeks ago, came out with this, right? So it's a VS Code extension. Um, as of a couple of weeks ago, what it did was it took an SVG and made it into a column format and did some fancy stuff with uh, you know the shapes and so on. Wow, wow, wow. Well, it's been updated as of this morning. So now you can do HTML to column formats directly inside VS Code. It's also going to do some intelligent mapping on that. So if it's going to find elements that uh, don't belong, uh, it's going to bring those over, but also some default styling with those to try and make them closer to what they should be, since we've really only got about six element types they can be right, out of you know uh, a few hundred or however many it is. So that's what's going on there. And then also we've added live updates. Woo -hoo! So let's take a look at that. Uh, and just so we don't have to come back to the slides, I also want to mention another tool I'm going to show one more time here, which is SP Formatter, which is awesome, right? So Sergey Sergeyev has put this together for us, part of the PNP team. This is a, a Chrome or you know a Microsoft Edge extension, but it also has a VS Code extension, which is the part that I'm going to be showing off today because that works really, really well with JSONify live formats. Woo! Let's take a look. All right, let's head on back. All right, so we got this site. Again, I'm a, I'm a young horse. I don't really care about all these things. I want to learn all this stuff. But, uh, you know, they're trying to appeal to me. So they think, uh, what, are the, what are the kids like today? They like recipes, of course, right? So, look, we've got a recipe tracker list here. You know, the kids can't get enough of these recipes. So put that recipes in there. They can track them inside SharePoint like everyone wants to do. Let's just add a, a couple of quick uh, items here. It doesn't really matter what, uh, I don't know, a sausage apples sounds exciting. Horse meat. <laughs> Why not? Uh, fruit and uh, yeah, tears of the fall. Perfect. Okay. Now, uh, oh, what? Uh, I want tears of the fall. And that was a great suggestion. All right. Perfect. I apparently have typed that before. <laughs> that says about me. Okay. Perfect. All right. We got tears of the fallen. So here we go. Now we've got exciting uh, list, and we're just using this. We don't really care a whole lot because our focus is not necessarily on how to do formats. It's how to do formatting. Ooh, what does that mean? Let's find out. So let's head on back here and go over to our VS Code where all this stuff happens. So just to review, 
right, this is kind of what we had before. We had this SVG here, right? So this is an SVG with several unsupported element types, right? Uh, none of these right here are supported uh, in list formatting, right? We only get paths uh, and then text doesn't easily come over. But now we can say over here and we can go convert to SP list format. All right now we got our format over here and that's exciting. You'll see that it's made a path for all of these items uh, except for the text, which it cannot bring over. Uh, just because text doesn't map easily, but now this is where we see our live updates. So you can start to see like when I update the color here, ooh, updates there and live, you know, so we can see those things start to appear wherever we need to. And that makes troubleshooting this stuff a lot easier. And again, we kind of looked at the SVG stuff before. Let's take a look at some uh, HTML stuff. Nah, I don't care. All right, so let's go over here. Uh, so with HTML, right, we could just write our own. Let's get rid of it. We don't need to go bomb anymore. Bye, bye. All right. So let's add some HTML, right? We could add a little snippet or something, right? So if we wanted to, you know, get all fancy with an HTML document, we could. And we could come in here and we could say, you know, do. Let's see. Surely it's going to auto-complete something for me. Let's see. You know, we add an H1 tag, right? We'll call this, we'll say, of course, wow, we, because everyone needs to say wow, we all the time. Very important. All right. And then maybe we add a div and it's got a span, you know, that says horse. <laughs> Sounds great. All right. The idea is you're just writing HTML here um, and then you convert that to the format. And so now we have a format. And one of the things it's doing, you might notice is a little strange, is we've got a couple of styles that are showing up here uh, that maybe don't always show up over here, right? And the reason for that is because H1 elements don't exist. Um, you know, there's not a supported element type, right? So really the closest thing we have is a div but we can go ahead and apply some base styles on that to kind of respect that original designation as an H1, right? So this matches the default styling of the browser. So, you know, you go with that. We've got that for all of them. Uh, so for all of the elements and everything that we are mapping over to either divs or spans, that's pretty much how that goes. Um, if it's not one of the chosen elements, that's what it becomes is a div or a span, sometimes with some extra styling associated with it, again, to make that all work magically. Okay, so now if we take a look at this, let's let's take a look at something just slightly even more magic, right? As we're messing with this, and let's see, let's move this guy uh, like that into that guy, and let's grab this, our horses, where's our blood stallions? All right, let's move you down to that one. Okay, perfect. Okay, so then we can kind of see it, and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to format this thing. So I'm going to format this column, and I mentioned that extension. I'm trying to fit all this on the screen, so I apologize for being a little tanny. All right, and I'm going to just turn that on. All right, so once I've enabled that, you should see that show up down here once I pick advanced mode. I can see the advanced formatter. All right, it looks like it's already connected, but just to make sure, I'm going to start a new session. There we go. So when I start that session here, all right now you can see the HTML I wrote over here is becoming a format over here that's getting applied over here with SP formatter and it's getting automatically previewed over here. So very fancy, right? So now I can do things like just edit my HTML directly, right? And I'm seeing it show up right in SharePoint, which is very, very exciting, right? So I, as a young, as a young horse that doesn't care about XSL or JS Link or all the history of the battles we fought coming through all our SharePoint wars over time, right? I know HTML, I know CSS, and someone asked me to make a date red. Well, I could do that, right? I could type in some date stuff here and I can make a red and then you can do some tweaking here to make that a little better, right? So that's cool. We don't need all of this extra junk. That's just if you want it, right? You can have all that, but none of that's required. So we can make that look a little better. And now one of the real powerful things here is, let's power, is the fact that we're editing this here. Uh, right here, we can get nice things like, um, you know, horse is, you know, are great, great. And then we'll say something like, you know, emphasis, don't you think? So we just write these things in line, right? And then we could say, you know, a strong, and we're just mix, messing things, mix, mixing things in here. And we could say a style, right? Is a color, I don't know, red. Sounds good. Oh, good. Actually, on that section. So let's see. So now what we're seeing, the power is, I'm able to just write this almost as a sentence. I can read it almost as a sentence. Because when you actually look at that inside a format, when you start to break things up across like this, and this is not a you know not an uncommon scenario to be bolding or emphasizing things, putting color on certain parts of text, that gets really really hard to read inside a format or to edit that, and it gets hard to do that in a way that's you know 
in any way fast, right? Trying to move this and then drag these elements around is difficult. So write it in HTML, right? And get those auto completions and wow, 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 wow. That's exciting. Now, why do we, uh, now I'm still having to write this stuff. What's that all about? That's crazy, right? Well, you'll notice I've also pinned uh, Copilot over here, right? So we can do uh, some exciting Copilot stuff. I mean, no demo would be complete today without some kind of AI, right? Of course. So let's, uh, let's ask it first. Let's try and skip everything and say, generate a, you know, Microsoft SharePoint uh, column format, right? That has a hot pink box uh, with rounded corners. We'll just get, we're going to challenge it, right? Not a classy drop shadow, right? And a thick purple border. And we'll say inside the box is a header that says, nay, queen. All right, great joke. All right, and and has the classes MS font color white and MS font color theme primary dash dash hover classy. All right, and then why don't you slap some smaller text on there that says equals at current field plus single quote exclamation point, point single quote double quotes, right? We're going to add that on there with a class of MS font color neutral primary, right? And then just for the heck of it, why not? We're going to position some pretty yellow SVG flowers, stars or something <laughs> over the top. Let's see how it does with that, right? So the idea is we're just going to see how how uh, how good is Copilot at uh, list formatting, right? Now, if it goes like it has before, I can tell you it's got it's a bit of a mixed bag, right? So let's find out. First, it's going to tell us all the things it's going to tell us before it actually gets to actually tell us about it. So here we go. Here's a, a format it's starting to come out with everything we asked for here. Ooh. All right, and then I'm just going to copy that thing. Where's my copy button? Right up here. And because this thing's still live, I can just paste it in here, right? So I paste it in here. You'll notice it does not work, right? And we're like, what? It looks like a good format. And if you start to investigate, you start to notice a couple things. One, uh, Copilot thinks H1 tags are acceptable, right? Uh, it'll actually say things in here, uh, like it's got a source for our image as an SVG. That's not going to work, right? It doesn't understand that we can just do an SVG. Uh, it's got some other weird stuff. I've actually seen it each time I've done this has been different, right? Sometimes it does the uh, SPFX style classes. Right, where it actually tries to put in those uh, theme tokens and so on. So it's got a, it's got some issues, right? But you know what it does do well? So it's not great at list formatting, but it's pretty good at HTML. So let's go grab that whole thing we just wrote. All right, let's grab that again. But let's paste it this time and say, instead of generating the format, let's say generate, you know, some HTML. There we go. So we'll try that and we'll see if it does any better with that. Let it think for a moment. So here's some HTML code that should do those exact things that we're asking for, right? Well, we hope. <laughs> always, always good to do it live. Let's see. So there we go. We've got ourselves a nice thing. It's drawn a polygon. That would be normally a problem for us, but we know that it's going to override. So we paste that in there. Boom. I don't know what it's doing with that star. We I mean, might take a look at that at some point. It's got some kind of big view box. But the idea here is not only did it slap it in there, right? It's automatically got the, uh, because we did that at current field equals, you know, with the double exclamation points, it's automatically taken care of some of those things. It's got our classes uh, in there as we requested, and it works. It also understands certain things like it specified they wanted an H1 tag because Copilot's saying, hey, you asked for a big piece of text. I know the semantic way to express that is a header one tag, right? But we don't have that. So we know over here, we've gone ahead and, you know, bumped up the size and made it bold because we know it was an H1 tag and so on. And so that's uh, the exciting magic of Gsonify. Uh, I'm trying to think what else uh, we need to show you here. I guess that's probably enough. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I guess we're going to be a little early unless people got questions about any of this, but it is free and it is available to you and it is in beta. So if you find any issues, please ping me, reach out, uh, working actively on going a little further with some of the styles. Uh, we're already doing inline styles or doing uh, styles that are attributes are all being mapped correctly. Uh, but right now, if you've got style tags or, you know, like a linked CSS, none of those are being brought over just yet. But uh, hopefully soon. We'll see. 
All right, that's it for me, Paul. Thank you.